Welcome back guys and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Larry and I'd like to uh, pass on a little information about putting in a driveway, a, a sliding gate across your driveway. Now I put a video out here not too long ago of this gate uh, when we first installed it. And this is the back side of it, of course the yard side. And I stress the point that you really want to pay close attention to building the pad for the uh, drive motor or the gate opener or whatever you like to technically call it. Um, I didn't spend a lot of time on this. I was actually uh, wasn't here on the property at the time and I was just trying to put something together and I put a bag and a half of concrete down there and that just temporarily worked. Uh, and I'll explain to you a little bit later what happened. So now I'm doing a revision. I'm actually moving the gate to the inside of the property instead of the outside of the property. And uh, we'll house the motor on the inside of the property as well. There's a pad there I'm building. It's actually going to be 28 by 24 and approximately 8 inches deep. Now my gate is pretty big. Uh, so I've got a 3,300 pound gate opener on it. And it uh, is really a little bit too much for it. But for the price I went with the bigger uh, gate opener uh, with two remote controls. I think at the time it was like 135 bucks, And now they're up there around 200 215 on eBay and Amazon. But uh, that's still really a good price. The gate opener itself is super strong. Uh, let me get you a picture, get up closer to that. But I can say that the mounting bracket at the bottom of it is pretty flimsy. You'll have to do a support brace like I did here if you got a big gate. Smaller gates, it may not affect it, but the big gate I've got here does affect it quite a bit. Okay, you see I've got my electrical here. I've already disconnected it because it was previously run underneath the box I'm building for the uh, the pad for the motor. Now, like I said earlier, this is 26 or 28 by 24. It's going to be 8 to 10 inches deep. Some of you may say that's an overkill. Well, it might be, but I'm not going through this issue again of having to rebuild this, this gate mechanism any uh, another time at all. It's a lot of work. Um, I plan on running about six to seven bags, yeah, maybe six, six and a half bags of concrete in there, uh, 80 pound bags. It's going to be a heavy duty base. I'm also going to take some steel and uh, hammer it down into the ground in four different spots there and put rebar in it and some chicken wire or something to reinforce it. But guys, that's the uh, reason I'm filming this video. I just don't want y'all to make the same mistakes I made uh, trying to rush a project. Um, I was kind of limited on time when I installed it the first time. I live about 500 miles from here and I was running out of daylight. So I just want to throw something together, but don't do the, don't make the same mistakes I did. Spend the time, install your gate. If you got to put a gate opener on it later, do that. But spend your time, spend your money wisely and put you a good pad down for the drive motor, gate opener, whatever you want to call it, the first time correctly. So your sensors and your magnets will stay working properly. And you won't have all the issues I had. Guys, I hope this video helped. If you've got any questions or comments, please post them, post them down below. We really like to hear your your voice on this, on your, on this thing here uh, when it comes to your comments and suggestions. Uh, hit the like, subscribe button. We need all the help we can get. We're just another off-the-gridder DIY guy out here in the backwoods of East Texas. Stay tuned for future videos. Remember, hit the like, subscribe. We'll send you our next video that comes out. Thanks for watching. We're on the outside of the gate now, and uh, this is the far right of it. It's actually a slide and cantilever gate. There's no tracks on the driveway, so you don't bend those, and there's no way to bend anything up when you're driving across it. Setting on 4 inch by 4 inch uh, 316 square tubing, the post are. And this is the front side of it. As you see, I just kind of throw the slab down there, throw some iron in the middle of it, staked it. I drove some stakes actually in the ground about a foot and a half to thinking that would stabilize it before I put the concrete down. But needless to say, it did not work very long. Uh, I was having a lot of problems. Well, let me get another a little further back of the picture of the other end of the gate here. There's a counterbalance on it. It's about nine feet long. I want to say, I'm not exactly sure, but I think the gate is 18 feet across with 9 foot of counterbalance. 
And again, the poles are four inch by four inch, three sixteen inch steel. You see the pad I'm building on the inside yard side. And let me tell you what happened here, or why I'm having to renovate or modify this. The sensors, or the magnets, are what tell the gate tell the gate to open or stop when you engage the remote control. Now. It's kind of difficult to explain, but the clearance between here and this housing where the magnet sensors is at is pretty minimal. If you get it out of range, it won't shut it off and the gate will continue to close until it just binds up. And there's a relief handle on the back of this motor, and I'll get a picture of that here shortly, that you can, it's got a key in it that locks it. You can open it up and release that. But if there's a lot of pressure on there like there was in this situation, because it's a 3,300 pound motor, I broke the handle off of it. And that was simply because the pad itself did not have enough concrete at the base of it to keep the motor stable enough to where the sensors would function correctly 100% of the time. So what was happening is the sensors would get out of range when, they, when the magnet would come across it and they would not close or stop it or open it, vice versa. So if you're putting in a, a driveway gate with these remote control motors, make damn sure that you build a big enough pad so that it holds it very secure. If not, your sensors are gonna get out of range, your gate's gonna malfunction many times, and you're gonna have issues just like I'm having right here. I cannot stress the fact, let me say it one more time, Make sure you invest the time, buy you four or five bags of concrete, put your good base down. If you don't, you're going to have a lot of problems. Now let's go back around the other side.